What's up guys? Welcome back to the shop. My name's Adam. We got a new project to work on here. What we have is some motorcycle pistons. Got a set of hyper coils. These are 83 millimeter pistons that are going into a 2009 Suzuki Hayabusa. And this belongs to a friend of mine named Rodney and he is building a drag bike out of this Hayabusa. That's something that Rodney does. He likes to drag race and, and uh, he's doing some modifications to this particular motor. I know he sent off and had the uh, cylinder board. Uh, stock is 81 millimeter and he's going two millimeter oversized. So he's going with 83 millimeter pistons. And he also had mentioned that the uh, cylinder was sent off and had some kind of special coating done on the cylinder walls there. And at the time that he sent the cylinder out to get bored, he didn't have the set of pistons yet. He hadn't bought any pistons. So since then, he's purchased these pistons. And this is one right here. And this will be for number one cylinder. They have a coating on the top of it. It's like a, a ceramic coating that's more of a heat barrier. So what Rodney needs is these four pistons. We got, like I said, we got a set of four here. These pistons on the skirts, on the piston skirt on each side, you can see a little bit of rubbing action going on right there. I'm um, assuming that's from him trying to fit them down in the cylinder. He's measured all of the bores, cylinders one, two, three, and four, and I've got some dimensions right here that he wrote down. And these four pistons need to be machined, and I've got the spec right here, and it's gonna be on the piston skirt. We gotta relieve approximately, it's gonna be, it looks like about two to two and a half thousandths is what's gonna be coming off the outer diameter here of the skirt. So, We've got some pretty tight tolerances there that we need to try to hit. One, three, and four is gonna be 3.2655. And then piston number two is gonna be 3.2651. And what that's gonna do is give him 2,000th clearance inside of the cylinder. The, uh, the, other, uh, the other thing that I forgot to mention there is he's running nitrous and that's what that's what the spec is for these pistons inside the cylinder is 2000s clearance for running nitrous. So we've got a pretty interesting project here and the thing that's been kind of running through my mind is how I was going to hold these things in the lathe. You know, of course you can chuck it, but you really don't have a lot to indicate there and you don't want to put marks on that part of the piston right there. So been kind of thinking about it, how I want to approach this job. And uh, Rodney has been pushing me. I've had these for a few weeks. So I decided what I want to do is make a fixture for these to go in that they will slide in and I'll be able to clamp the fixture around it. And that should hold it nice and true. And I'll be able to come in there and touch off and machine these to the right size. So I was digging around in my scrap pile right here. I found this piece of tubing. I don't remember what this was from and why I made this, but it's, it was a piece of solid that was bored and it's face on each side, but it's the perfect piece to make a fixture to hold these pistons. And my plan is this will be chucked up in the four jaw. We're going to use the Monarch and use the new four jaw chuck. This will be chucked up and we'll have it faced and machined and bored so that that piston will just slide in there and just far enough back. So, you know, about like so. This is also going to be split, and I'm going to drill it and tap it for a couple of draw bolts. So we'll have a couple cap head bolts on either side of the split line there so that it will draw it together. And we're going to split it first and get that taken care of, do the drilling and tapping, and then we'll set it up in the lathe and get it true and do the final bore for that piston to fit in. So pretty interesting project right there. We're about to get started on it. One other thing that we need to do, and I'll show you what we're gonna, I need to check my mic. We're gonna be using a three to four micrometer, and I wanna make sure that it's, that it's set to zero like it should be. So we're gonna, we're gonna check that out. I got a set of gauge blocks there. We're gonna use the gauge blocks. So I'm gonna show you along the way, 
I don't know if this is going to be one or two videos, but we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, let's go ahead and get started. This is my go-to set of mics for a lot of my mic usage around the shop here. This is a zero to six inch set. The first three for a one, two, and three are Brian and Sharp, and they are the slant line. And I love the thimble on these right there. I love the friction thimble. Some of my favorite mics to use. So uh, the next three for from three to six inch, they're Michitoya. And that's how I bought this box whenever I had acquired it a while back. So we're gonna pull the three to four. This is the mic that we're gonna use. Okay. We're going to see if we can do us a little bit of inspection, some calibration here. We're going to go ahead and use this tool here. This is something that you use to uh, hold your all of your gauge blocks. This was something that was given to me by a viewer, Swedish Made. All right, so we got the three to four mic, and I'm going to open up the gauge block set here. And... I'm going to use a, a three inch gauge block. All right, so we're going to use that one. And I'm going to, what I want to do is I want to stack up a few in here. And I'm trying to eliminate actually like holding this very much. I don't believe it's going to affect what I'm trying to do here, but let's go ahead and give it a shot. So I want to make sure this is a nice microfiber cloth. I want to make sure that the ends are, are clean. Okay, we'll fit that in there. This was a this is a long one here. They make these in different sizes, so you can adjust this rod up and down quickly like that. So let's go ahead and we'll stack us up a couple more in there so that we can reach it. All right. Let me try something else here too. I got a I got a couple of these really good 1 2 3 blocks. trying to get where you guys can see it what I'm doing here all right now I think we're getting somewhere I can uh, come in here and, and run the, the thimble with my fingers all right from here that looks like it's dead on let me read the tents Well, if it's anything, it might be a tenth off. It's sort of between the zero and the one on the tenth reading, so I think we're, I think we're there, right where it needs to be. Nope. Come on. Yeah, I think that's set to zero. We got a, we got a good mic. The, these Michitoyas I've always kept calibrated real close, but I haven't checked this one in a little time, so I think we've we've done good. So that gave me a chance to uh, get my gauge blocks out and and play with this tool here. Now I do have standards that come with this set too, and you can use your standards. This is my standard set here but I don't really get to play with the gauge blocks much. And the gauge blocks are a much more precise way of checking 
your indicators and measuring tools and things like that. You can use this, this holder here to stack up gauge blocks and use it to be able to check your inside mics also. So for instance, you could, you know, you can kick them out like this. Once you stack up whatever height that you want so that your spacing is correct. See, that's a, that's a two inch block that I put in there. So this should be two inches from here to here um, if I'm stacking them correctly and you can get in there and you can check your you know other other tools that way so anyway all right so we got a good mic let's go ahead and move on to the next step so we're going to use the Kearney and Trekker mill but we're going to use the uh, the horizontal arbor on it so we're going to go ahead and remove the vertical head this will be the first time I take it off after building the the uh, crane there the uh, parking attachment so we already got this side loose. I'm going to go crack the other side and we're going to swing this thing off out of the way. This clamp has slid back. So I can actually see at the top it started leaning forward just a little bit. So it's sitting on the overarms. I'm going to go over there to the crank handle and turn the crank handle and push those back and it should drop off there. That's something that was that a lot of people was concerned about whenever you see me put this on last is that they seen those overarms push back when in fact they seated up inside these little counter bores all the way and then they pushed back. So they have they it has been sitting on the overarms. There it goes. It just dropped off. We'll find out how far to go in there, I think, but like maybe a half inch or three quarters of an inch. There she is. All right. Three quarters. That's how far they fit on to the, uh, how far the overarms go up inside of this. There it goes. All right. All right it's all the way up against the machine. Okay. not quite touching the machine it's just off of it and then what I'll do is that set screw right here I'll tighten that set screw up and I'll keep this from trying to move either either direction so this is that arbor that a viewer of mine named Jim Leachy he had given me a couple months back it's a one inch arbor that he had I believe he had picked this up off eBay or something and uh, he sent it my way and it looks like it running nice and straight. So I'm gonna see if I can stack up enough spacers to be able to use this arbor here. That, that is a 24 inch arbor there. So Jim, looks like you did good there, man. All right, so here's the setup. I've got the uh, piece clamped down using a couple of gooseneck clamps. I'm trying to keep a low profile. It's always a challenge to be able to clear your clamps and your hardware whenever you're having to do some milling like this. So that's a five inch cutter right there and I think it's gonna give us just enough. What I wanna do is touch off and, I, and I'm hoping that I can go down three quarters of an inch. I think I got just enough room to do that. So I wanna find center. So what I'm, what I'm doing, I'm coming over here to the edge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch the edge of it on this side and then I'll be able to move it over two inches. Uh, that's a one eighth cutter. So we'll move it over two and one sixteenth of an inch and that'll put us in the center because that's a four inch diameter piece of material right there. All right, there's our edge. I'm going to set the Y axis to uh, zero. Just 
make our step over. All right, two inches, 62. That should be the center. the knee out here now and I'm going to go up three quarters of an inch. Okay, that's three quarters. I think we're just well clear. Hopefully. Uh, I need to get my coolant set up. And we'll go ahead and start to cut. So check out our new dual nozzle Noga Cool. This is the Mini Cool from Noga. And it's the dual nozzle model. This is one that Avi had sent me a few months ago. Finally setting it up, we're going to give it a shot. I got it all set up. and So I've got the nozzle on each side of the cutter. And it's really putting some coolant there on it. These are really nice little setups that don't cost a lot of money. And they're excellent for machines that, that you don't have flood coolant set up on. vibration there is not letting our magnet stay in place and the, they're kind of pulling around. I don't like the rigidness of the one inch bar that's going on. I think I need to make a little bit of adjustment on the bushing for the outboard support here, right here. slowed it down a couple notches and then I made a little adjustment on the bushing to help kind of tighten it up. I had to move my nozzles down because the vibration was making them spin on the overarm up top. Alright, that's one side. Let me readjust my nozzles there. By the way, we're just going to clear that gooseneck clamp on the back side. Alright, there she is split up. Move the nozzles back here. Okay, so um, we're going to go to the milling machine now. And the other thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to drill probably a quarter inch hole or something like that. 
in the corners of where these slits are and that'll that'll help the two halves flex a little bit better in addition we'll go ahead and drill it drill it and uh, tap it for our two cap head bolts for each side so our next setup over here in the do-all mill is I want to put some radiuses in the corners of these slots here I don't think it's necessary for what I'm going to do it's just an added feature that I want to uh, put into it I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill this is a uh, extended length end mill that'll reach all the way through there and it has been used but it should work fine for this and I've got my Colin Chipette made multi-axis stop already set up we already got it clamped in so I'm going to show you how I'm going to line this up I'm not going to use the edge finder or nothing to find the center we're just going to eyeball it but we'll start with a 1 8 wide parallel because I made a 1 8 slot and we'll stick it in there and then we're going to use this little machinist square and we'll use this to square it up like so but we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring it over here next to our stop all right so i've got it square with the machinist square and it's butted up against the rod on this stop here i'm just going to hold a little bit of pressure while i clamp the vise all right and should be close enough for our government work there got the end mill in the collet so what i'm going to do we're just going to line this up by sight and this should put us within ten thousandths i would guess okay i'm going to come over to slot and i'm just going to turn it so that the the two cutting flutes are sort of like parallel with the table here and i'm just going to use my eyes to just kind of judge the center of it and then I'm gonna line up, say, be maybe about half of it, half of it on the cutter there, and that's where we're gonna cut it right there, hopefully. So, all right, we're ready to go. I want to hook up my little mister, and then we'll get started. Rotate it a little on me. Okay. All right, there's our two radius cuts we made. Hopefully that'll, this will allow it to spring a little bit. We're only gonna need just a few thousandths. So now what I wanna do is go ahead and we're gonna set this thing up and I wanna drill it and tap it It'll be drilled in counterboard on one side and then tapped on the other side for a, a cap head bolt on each side so we can draw it in there. So I'd like to set it up square and level with that slot. So what we'll do, we'll set a parallel there. We'll stick this parallel that we used earlier back in here. All right, we're just gonna set it just like that. So it's sitting square. Now I'm gonna tighten the vise and I'm gonna give it some A-bomb torque. I don't want it to push down whenever I'm drilling it. So it's good and tight right there. I guess what I could do is just leave that parallel just in there like that whenever I'm doing my drilling and counterborn just to make sure that it doesn't try to push it down either way okay so let's get set up for that all right i think i found the bolts that'll work these are quarter 20s and i want some a little shorter than that so i don't know if these bolts will work but i'm gonna 
I'm going to try them anyway, but if these are too long, then what I'll do is I'll just pick pick up some at a, we got a fasten all down the road, and I'll just pick up a couple down there. But we're going to do quarter 20s because we don't have a whole lot of room to work with here. So this is four inches in diameter. Our piston is basically three and a quarter. It's about three and a quarter. So what that's leaving us with after this is bored out is three quarters of an inch. So you divide that in two, that's gonna be three eighths of an inch on each side, 0.375. That's how much wall thickness will be left there is three eighths. So we wanna take half of that and be in the center of that. So you divide that by two, that's three sixteenths. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna to touch off on the side of the part with an edge finder here. And we'll step it over 3 sixteenths. Right, 250 for the edge finder and then we'll go 150, 60, 70, 85, 6, 7. Or you could just go <coughs> um, 11 sixteenths. So that'll be That'll be the center line there of where we want it. So let's go ahead and pick up this, this front side and then we'll step it back. And that, I haven't even thought about that yet. Probably a quarter inch. All right, we're gonna create our flat spot and also be our counter bore for our cap head bolts. So I'm using a 3 8 end mill. I'm just come down to touch right there. And I'm just using the, uh, the knee crank. What I'm gonna do is just look for it to uh, make a full radius on the flat there. All right, I think that's gonna be good right there. Using that quarter inch stub link drill, uh, brand new that the stack house is giving me. I'm gonna come through the break and just spot the bottom side there. All right, just came through. All right, and I just spotted it with the drill. So we'll have to drill the bottom side, tap size for quarter 20. Should be a number seven drill. coming through that bottom so I'm going to use the hand crank here oh. <laughs> a little too far hit the chuck all right we got our spring loaded center in there. We got a quarter 20 gun tap, which is a spiral pointed tap. So it should point the, uh, the chip, uh, shoot the chips down. And I'm doing this by hand. I don't want to try to power tap it and risk running the chuck into it. So I'll do it with uh, this gun tap. And it may be enough, but I might run a bottom tap in there just to run the threads as deep as I can and see if we can utilize those bolts that I got. Might have to just cut some off. Can't go much further there. There you can see the see the chip coming out the bottom. 
two flutes. That's why they call it the Spillmaster. <laughs> All right, that's as far as I can get this tap. So I'll have to run a bottom tap in there and try to get the threads a little bit deeper. That's a brand new set that I had bought when Greenfield was still Greenfield. And I think this is the first time I've used them. Yeah, that's as far as I can get. The, the, tap, the tap wrench is hitting right there. I have to look and see. I might have a, a um, like a pulley tap, which is a long shank. I might be able to find one of those around here. All right, well, I can see right off that my bolts here are not going to work. They're just way too long. So I'll finish this out, and then tomorrow I'll pick up the right length bolts that I need. So we're going to do all this again that I just showed you. I'll give you some highlights and we'll get this millwork finished out. Well, I don't know what I did wrong, but this side over here, I offset it wrong from the edge. I don't know why I did that. I had all the right measurements in my head and I still offset it wrong. But this side I've got right over here. And I've got a couple of these stainless quarter 20 cap head bolts there that, you know, would work fine. So I can use that on that side right there. But somehow this one, I moved it 5 16 to the center. And I don't know why I did that. I just don't. I had to go back and look at the footage and see what I did. This side we got right. We got a 3 16 from the edge. So... This one's not going to work because when I go to bore this for the piston, it's going to start hitting in. It's going to start cutting into where that um, tapped hole is right there. So another stupid screw up right there. I'm hoping that maybe this one bolt right here will work. I'm going to bore this thing to a very close tolerance on that piston so that it just fits in there with no play. So hopefully with this one bolt, it won't take much. It's tight there. Then once I give it just a little pull like that, should give it just enough to hold that piston because we're just taking a few thousands off of it. So, all right, so there, there it is. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. That's what it's supposed to look like. I should have verified my length in there where it was at and I didn't do it. So we'll go ahead with it and see if it works. <laughs> 